Welcome back everyone. <laughs> I have one bag there and I have one bag there. Previously on the channel, I bought a cheap option to the Easy Rig Minimax. I bought a cheap copy, I suppose you could say. I bought it on eBay and the price was 170 bucks or like 170 euros. So not much at all. In that video, I was also talking about the triangle the medical triangle of when you're buying stuff so you kind of like getting what you pay for it like in the top you have functions then you have um, like being cheap and then you have quality and being good and there's like a saying that pick two out of these if you want all of them uh, well all of them doesn't work if you want it to be good and have all the function it's generally not cheap and if you want functions and it to be cheap, you it's not so good in many cases. And that actually applies to this as well. First of all, just have a look on, on the bag. This is the bag that you get with the cheap option. It's not that bad. It's a decent bag, it's small in size, but that's just all there is to it. It's a bag with handles. Then take a look on, on, on the easy rig, what you get. First of all, you have the possibility to carry it like this. So that's a super cool feature and it's super useful if you're going to location to be able to put it on your back. Besides that, you have a lot of extra pockets. You have a pocket in the back, you have some side mesh here where you could put stuffs. And if you open it up, and besides that, there's also different materials and the whole design of it is well thought through. There's even the possibility, if you don't like these handles, you could just like undo them and you could hide them away and then it's just like a regular bag. Perfect if you're gonna transport it, if you can fly with it or anything like that. So once again, we are here with this triangle. Functions being good and cheap. This one is not cheap, but it is on top of the other one, two things. Well, when it comes to being cheap, that is like, it depends on many things. This one is about $1,200. It's not that extreme just compared to your camera and your other equipment and the possibility that this one gives. This one and a kind of rig like this is totally outstanding if you're doing any sort of productions and you're going to work for longer times. And you might think that, okay, I'm going to buy this one that is extremely cheap and it holds the camera, right? But no, absolutely not. I have been working with both of these rigs and I tried them out for a longer amount of times and I would say after one hour of filming with the sheep options, I'm done. I don't want to film any much longer. But with the easy rig, that is not an issue. So I suppose if you are a professional and or if you're planning to shoot for a long day with a quite heavy setup. This is my setup. And it's not the most heaviest one. It's a Panasonic S5, some batteries, monitors, and a rig. And well, this one kind of does the job, but this one does the job good, and it lets you focus more on being creative. So, if you are a professional, don't even considering the cheaper options, just go for it on an easy rig, that's what I've said. Um, then there's some other stuff, like security. Uh, what if this one fail? It's a cheap option. Where did it do the compromises? Could it fail? Well, maybe it could, and then your expensive equipment gonna fall down in the floor. I strongly doubt that the easy rig will fail because they are all about quality. You might wonder now, why do I have a cheap rig here and I have an easy rig here? Well, when I did a video about this rig, it 
turned out that EasyRig actually saw my video and they commented on it. And I thought then, well, can't you just send me an EasyRig that I could borrow and I can look at the differences to see what you actually get for your money? Do you really get for what you pay for? So let's open it up and see what we have inside. So, first impression. Well, by the look of it, this one looks more solid. And we come down to the functions and being able to adjust the height of the arm, this one is stuck here. And previously I complained that this one is a little bit tight. But when it comes to the easy rig, you have these four bolts here, which you could undo. And then from there, you could easily adjust the height of it. If you need less space, you want it to be closer to you, you pull it down. And if you need more space, you pull it up. So it never really gonna feel that tight. And if it does, there is a possibility to adjust it. Second thing is how you attach the arm. This is the way EasyRig does it. There's no screws or anything here. You just fold it up and it's ready to go. And then there is this function and feature where you could actually turn the arm around a little bit. So you could positioning the camera a little bit away from yourself or closer to yourself or wherever you want. This one in the other hand is solid in place and you turn it on by two M6 screws which and Using this construction, it's not the worst, it's not that bad, and in some ways it's pretty decent because when you, you can lift up the whole bag using the screws. But before I was but before I do stuff, so I'm gonna see if I could lift it up without the screws. And it is like doable, but it goes up a little bit, so it depends a little bit on your pressure on the rig. Lifting this one up is also doable, but that also depends on how you adjusted it. There is a thing that I've noticed though when I've been working with both of these rigs, which is that they are both adjusted for the same rig and this one goes down very smooth and easy, while this one is not that smooth. It is like there is a resistance in it and friction in the system. When it goes up, it kind of goes up in steps. So you clearly feel that there is some sort of friction in the system, while the Easy Rig is just buttery smooth. So the Easy Rig is definitely more refined. If we're looking on the rigs itself, you see a huge difference. First of all, look at this. This is the support. This is the support that goes on your hip. And if I turn this one upside up and down, there is a support on it. I can't push it and compress it. I can't push this hip strap upwards. But if I try to do the same on this one, well, first of all, the whole rig moves around. And honestly, this screws and the construction that holds this one together, um, I think I need to like put more tensions on it and put some Loctite on it and deassemble this a little bit, um, which is kind of not what you wanted to do if you buy a rig. You want the rig to be like, as it should and be ready to go with. But this one is moving around quite a lot. And 
what that means is that this one is not going to support the camera as good as the easy rig and by working with both of these setups that's also one of my impression that one of the impressions that i got that this one just does the job it supports the camera in a good way the whole back if you're feeling this it's solid it's like a quality foam material in it when you're pushing it there's a resistance in it and it's also soft but if you compare it to this one it clearly feels like they just like took some package foam and put into it it is possible to open it up and you could see what's inside this is like a white packaging foam that you get when you're ordering stuff to protect the things that you're ordering. Let's open up the easy rig and see what we got in here. First we have one layer here that looks to be a soft material that is breathable. And then we have a big foam pad here. And in the end, we have a really hard foam that clearly is a quality foam. This foam here reminds me of the kind of foam that you put inside of your mountain bike tires. And when you're hitting a stone, that foam is protecting your rim from getting damage and it's also protects you from getting punctures while this foam reminds me of a pool noddle so big difference here but are we surprised are we surprised that a thing that is made in sweden and constructed in sweden and cost one thousand two hundred dollars in many ways totally outperform a thing that you buy on eBay probably made in China for 170 euro or 170 dollars are you actually surprised I'm not but let's put them both to the test and bring them on and see how they support the camera because that's kind of what's most important, isn't it? First of all, just like getting the hip on here. It is like the one, one of the pieces are a little bit bigger, so it's, it's a small struggle to get it on. Let's get that one on and now. Let's put some tensions on the hip and get the camera on. The clamps though are very similar. They, they are built on the same construction that you are just tightening it down. And here we are. The first thing I noticed here is that the rig down here where my hips are and where the weight should be it pulls out upwards and that kind of putting all of the weight on the front so I need to like use my lower back in order to keep it up it puts some tensions on my lower back that might be that I need to Put more tension on the hip so let's try that well might be i i know for sure that you're not really getting away with that but it's getting a little bit better if you put that tension on the hip now let's see again well same thing again it pulls out it doesn't fully support you and you're not really getting the weight on the hips 
And as previously mentioned, I feel like this one is a little bit too tight. You could adjust it like back and forth, but this is the maximum. And if we're gonna move it down, you clearly have a sort of resistance. So it doesn't move as smooth. And every time you move it down, you kind of feel like it pull in your back. So you need to like work with your lower back. And this is somewhere <sighs> the lowest it goes. And now it should go up. It goes up pretty smooth, it's okay. It kind of does some sounds that might worry me a little bit. It, I actually have to use some force to get it down. When it reaches the top, it, it's a little bit loose up here. So, but maybe, maybe I have too much tension on it. Maybe I need to to decrease the tension on it a little bit, uh, which I assume is left. There's no markings on this one, so you don't really know. Well, that made it loose, but look at this. That is too loose, so now it won't go up. Okay, so now it's up. Will it go up? Yeah, so, so at some point you kind of reach a level where you can't make it any looser. Let's just see how it is with the easy rig. First of all, it goes up and down like nothing. And let's undo it as much as possible. on this one, on the adjustment on the back. I suppose that it will come to a stop when I can't go any further. But still, it goes up and there's tension on it. Here we see the thing, if I'm lifting it in the arm, it goes up a little bit, but now I'm also on the very lowest tension. Let's get it on. And feel the difference. First noticeable difference is that this one is kind of like hugging you. And that's a good thing because it means that it forms after your body and it kind of gives a much better support. If I'm pulling here, you kind of like feel that it has some tendency to want to move out, but it just doesn't. Compared to the other way, it doesn't move out as much and it's still, the, the weight, stays where it's supposed to be. Let's get the camera on. And now we have the tension on the very loose side. And I could, well, a little bit too loose to be honest, because it kind of moves down by itself. So clearly too loose for this setup. Let's do something about that. The Minimax, uh, this one is made for camera setups that are between two and seven kilos, which is equal to four to 15 pounds. I put some more tensions on it now, and let's see how that compares to before and now we are perfectly fine and if you noticed i i just moved this down with just my finger and 
when I'm moving it up and down, there, there's no unnatural weight. I don't have to pull it down. It just moves down. So, so that's a huge difference. And I'm going to put some more tensions on the hip. And this key thing on these kinds of rigs are to put tensions on the hips. With the right amount of tension, you get the support. And this one, when you tighten it down, it gives you that support. So, first impression here, if, if we would film, it is still a little bit tight, uh, but it is not as tight as the other rig, and I could easily stand like this and have control over my displays and see what I'm doing. This one is adjusted to its maximum position in the way I could go outwards with the camera, but also upwards with it. So, uh, this means for me, there is space to work with. But then we have the other thing with the arm that could be turned, which means I could, if I want, I could turn it like this. So I have it a little bit on the side and I could look forward or I could stand like, like this and filming sideways. If I'm gonna wanna get low, I have more adjustabilities. So that's one of the things in this triangle functions Overall, this one just goes up and down very smoothly and it works very well. So, after some small tests here in my room, I clearly feel a very noticeable difference on how the Easy Rig supports the camera and how it feels. I feel a very noticeable difference how it slides up and down and how it moves. I have also been working uh, and try uh, with both of these setups. I on those works I had a gimbal setup and that was probably in the higher range of what these rigs are designed for. But rest assured that just after a short amount of time of filming with that thing, the sheep option, it, my back was almost killed. While this one, the easy rig, just did it work very well. It supported the weight, it did, did what it was designed to do. So the only conclusion that you could come up with here is that if you are a pro, or if you're planning to use this a lot, if you are planning to, um, to um, use the rig for extensive amounts of times, which is what you wanna do when you're buying this kind of rig, go for the easy rig. Um, save, save your money and go for the easy rig. So, but, well, I still have this other rig, so the question is, what should I do about that? What should I do with that? After I've been trying the easy rig, I'm not gonna like this. This is not the rig I want, would wanna work with. And we are in, in two situations here. And those situation is the things I do privately, which is mainly this YouTube channel and private projects, which all of them are more or less related to this YouTube channel. And then we have the other thing, which is the work I do professionally. I do work as a professional filmmaker and I've done my living for filmmaking for over 50, for almost 15 years now. And we are just about to invest in, we, we have been looking around 
or I have been looking around for different rigs and stuff like that for a while. And there's absolutely no doubt that it's going to be an easy rig. No doubt. Because when, you, when I'm doing professional work, well, there is resources to pay for it. And we're also going to have a look on the other options that Easy Rig provide. They have rigs for all kinds of cameras, they, and they have some solutions for uh, gimbals and stuff like that. And they, they are widely used everywhere. But I think privately, I probably have to stuck. I'm probably stuck with this rig. But I'm probably gonna keep an hand on the rig while working. With the easy rig, I kind of feel comfortable just let go uh, of the camera. But I don't really feel that comfortable doing that with this cheaper option. And the main reason for that is basically because when I'm pulling it down like this, the sound change. There's a different sound every once in a while when you're pulling it down. And that kind of tells me that there is some sort of friction in the system. What will that friction do? over time with the strength of the line? Uh, that is a very good question. So keep that in mind if you're having this sort of rig. Um, I will, I will, I'm, I'm not gonna take my hand off of it. And just to clarify it, I, th this is not a sponsored video. Easy Rig has Nothing to say about what's in this video. They're not gonna see it before I publish it. And it's not sponsored. Quite, quite the opposite though. I kind of, when I talk with them, I kind of got the feeling like, yeah, you, you try it and you say exactly what, what you feel about it. And they were kind of like feeling confident about your product being superior to that thing. So I got the feeling that they have absolutely no reason to try to convince me or that their product is better than this thing. It kind of speaks by itself. Just like looking on these two products, you could feel, see that this one is the better one. And then when you take them on and when you had a camera in it, it's like day and night. So let's do it like this. It's like a one finger operation. Like here, in the top. I'm gonna to use one finger here and push it down. And the sound that comes from the rig when I'm pulling it up and down, it's consistent. Well, this is a rig where I don't mind taking my hands off. And this is the rig that is superior always. This is the rig that you could work with for a full day of filming and shooting. And uh, this is definitely the rig you should go for. Uh, that's the rig that you just have to live for if you don't have the money to buy this one. But in some ways, I kind of like feel like maybe I wasted my money. Um, or or may, may, maybe not. There, there, is, there is a way, there is a... I, I'm still going to use that rig. But I would much rather have an easy rig. So, with that, if you like this kind of content and you want to see more, camera related stuff, click here to see a full playlist with that and click down here to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up, let me know in the comments what you think about it. And uh, thanks for watching and I see you later.